This machine drives neocon, jingoistic warmongering, xenophobic crypto fascists from the room. Weird Al Yankovic started out recording funny songs on a cassette deck in his bedroom in Linwood, California. Today, that bedroom is still a bedroom, I think, but Weird Al is our preeminent purveyor of funny music with a career that spans four decades. I met Al years ago when he came to see my satirical folk group, The Foreman. Last summer, he graciously invited me into the room where he keeps his bachelor furniture and indulged my somewhat awkward interview technique. Yes, we're doing it. Okay, good. Yes, so I mean, you guys are going to do all the reactions later of you going? Yeah, all the Morley Safer stuff. <laughs> yeah, right, the reverse angle. Uh -huh. Hmm, yeah. And I've just got those in the can already. Good, good. Doesn't matter who's talking. <laughs> I think back on songs that changed my life. Mm -hmm. And like Tom Lehrer, of course. Yeah, especially at that time. I mean, you know, Tom Lehrer was like, you know, so different in that era. I mean, you know, nobody was doing that kind of music at the time. Um, it just seemed uh, even, probably even more irreverent than it was just because it was such a product of that era. And Tom Lehrer has done, I forget how many, but only like what, 39 songs? Yeah. Or something like that. That's his whole in, entire output. Right. But he's an icon. I mean, at least in my heart, and I know a lot of other people, he just like, he's like a hero of mine just right. based on that. You know? Right. I got a chance to talk to Tom Lehrer actually too when I was doing my nationwide tour last oh, nice. year. nice. And he said that he didn't think that songs made made a difference. He didn't think his songs, you know, that, that, you know, because I was kind of quizzing him on the on the you know, do songs change the world kind of. You know, I point. I kind of have to agree with him a little bit. I mean, and and John Stewart has, has made this point as well. Like satire, you know, I'm sorry to say, doesn't really change a lot of people's minds. <laughs> it's a lot of preaching to the choir. I mean. Um, I think that you know anybody that listens to your material and enjoys it probably wasn't a right wing you know uh -huh. <laughs> person in the first place. They didn't go. Roy makes a lot of sense. I get it now. Yeah, that doesn't really happen so much. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. No one's gonna go. You know, say you know you've <laughs> made an awfully good point there. Yeah, you have. I thought of it that way. And you've rhymed it so well. <laughs> you know, right? Uh, so you know, no one's. I'm using like... to boot. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> But, you know, but, the, but people who are in the choir sometimes are fence-sitting, too. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they need, they need uh, you know, uh, talking points for their, for their <laughs> arguments, you know what I mean? And, uh -huh, it, it, uh -huh. it, 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 you know, that, that's where I think it changes the world then, yeah. too. And I would say, then, to, to do a perfect pivot, to watch this, uh, this, this segue, that your songs have done the same thing for a lot of people. That I would say that. Okay. Explain. <laughs> Be, because the iconoclasm of the songs, the 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 uh, pointing out the absurdity things, or, or creating an absurdity where you know where, where there was seriousness before or whatever, breaks things open, makes you look at the world in a different way. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of, my humor is, I guess, more in, in the Mad Magazine school in that it's not some of it's satirical, some of it, uh, but it's not biting satire. Uh, it's, it's gentle comedy, it's parody. I've been taken to task by critics because my, my humor isn't quite so biting. But the overall effect, I think, as you pointed out, is to get people to maybe question authority sometimes, to not attach so much importance to something like pop music. You know, it's like, <laughs> right. it's, it's, it's kind of breaking it down to a human scale and realizing that like nobody's above being poked fun at. Um, do, do you, is it hard, I guess it's harder for you sometimes to, I mean, because your stuff, I mean, obviously my stuff isn't as topical now. I mean, people listen to some of my older parodies and it's more of a nostalgic thing for them. them. But, I mean, to do political humor like that, it seems like that ages even more poorly because you can't really talk about a lot of, a lot of those songs, I guess you just can't do anymore, right? Or, yeah, oh yeah, that's, you know, I, you know I've written 97,000 songs and, you know, about 20 of them I can still do, right? You know, so, right, you know, because you know, the joke used to be like, you know, we got great songs about Reagan's Paulup and the Falkland right. Islands War, and, you know, it's like, right, you know. But, that was one of the great things that uh, Tom Lehrer was good at to bring it back. Uh, I mean, he did a, a number of political songs, but they're songs that aged very well. Like, we still have a lot of the same problems. We still have like yeah. pollution, we still have bigotry, we still have like a right. lot of things he was you know, referencing. Uh, they're like, you know, <laughs> unfortunately probably never going to go away. 